Good morning, friend. Welcome back to Acre Homestead. I did something that I haven't done in a long time last night. I got some sour cream in the oven to ferment overnight. And I have, I used to do this all the time. I used to make all our sour cream 100% of the time. And then life got busy and I stopped making it. I had some cream in the refrigerator that really needed to be used up. And so I thought, you know what, let's see if I still have it in me to make sour cream and it looks like it turned out really well. To make sour cream at home, it is so, so easy. I do have a full step-by-step -step video on how to do it. And I basically do it exactly the same as I, I still do it exactly the same as I did in that video, except I don't use the towel anymore. So all I do is I pour cream into a quart jar and then I take some sour cream that has live active cultures in it and I put in a quart, I put about a good heaping tablespoon, stir that around, I stick it in the oven. Well, last night I roasted vegetables in the oven. I, once I was done roasting vegetables, I took the vegetables out, I turned the oven off, the oven was nice and warm. I put the ice cold, refrigerator cold milk with the sour cream culture in it and I put that in the warm oven with the light on and I just let it sit in there. It is 10, 10 right now, and I think I put it in there around seven last night. And look at this. We have beautiful, thick, sour cream. I didn't do anything except for put the cream in this jar with the starter culture, let it sit for however many hours, and you have yourself homemade sour cream. This is a probiotic as opposed to most of the sour creams in the grocery store are pasteurized after they're cultured or they're thickened with things like carrageenan and other thickeners. What is the other one that's really popular? I think they even sometimes put gelatin in it, but this is thickened just from the culture thickening the sour cream. Absolutely delicious. Now, next time I go to make sour cream, I don't need to use store-bought sour cream with a starter culture. I'm just gonna take a spoonful of this and put it in my cream. So now that I've done this, I'm sure that I'm gonna be on the habit of making sour cream again because it is so easy. So I can link that video if you want a full step-by-step -step video on how to make sour cream, but that's, that's how easy it is. So we are gonna put this in the refrigerator to chill because we're gonna make tacos tonight for dinner. My main goal today is to get our beans planted because it's not supposed to rain today and it's supposed to rain for the next five days. The irrigation is not set up in the garden. And because I'm gonna be planting bean seeds out there, you really need to make sure when you plant anything in the garden that's a seed that it stays moist until it germinates and i can go out there and water them no problem with the hose but i can let mother nature take care of it for me by having it rain for the next four days for me so we need to do something out in the grow room before we can go out in the garden and plant those bean seeds in these jars while they soak. Now, my goal would be to get not only beans planted today, green and dried beans, like shelling beans, black beans, and cannellini beans, but, and green beans to eat fresh, like green beans, and corn. I just, I don't know if I'm gonna have that kind of time today. I wanna soak my corn and my beans before I plant my corn. I'm gonna grow my corn this year in a raised bed. I've never done that before, but I've also had very poor success growing corn. I've tried to grow corn for the last three years, and I think total out of planting probably a thousand corn seeds over the last three years, I've gotten maybe 10 ears of corn. So the one thing I have not done is plant my corn in a raised bed that is irrigated, and that's what I wanna do this year. And I wanna soak my corn seeds before I plant them as well. But I'm worried that if I 
because I've got a big kitchen project I'm going to get to today. Once we get these soaking, I'm going to go inside and get a big kitchen project done, and then we're going to go out into the garden and get these finished. And then we're going to make dinner tonight. So let's see. So I definitely am going to start my black beans. We're going to do that today. And then I've got a whole myriad of green beans and other shelling beans. So let's go over here and take a look at what we got. Okay, so we have pinto beans, and I think these need to grow up on a trellis. Let's see what this is. High in protein, the most popular dried shelling bean for winter use. Good all-purpose bean, great refried young pods, may be eaten as green beans. So it doesn't say if these are bush beans or shelling or pole beans. So I don't know about those. The jade beans are a bush bean. So let's get some jade beans soaking because we're going to get these planted for sure today. I really like contender. These are a green bean. I really like contender green beans as well. So let's see. Do we want to do the contender first? I want to do two different successions of green beans so I have a longer harvest of green beans. Last year, we did not get very many green beans, enough to enjoy a couple dinners worth, but not anything to preserve. So I'm hoping we do better this year with green beans. I also have a couple other drying beans. I have cannellini beans and navy beans. I am actually gonna be canning today some barbecue baked beans, and I'm gonna be using navy beans for that. And let's see. I go through my seeds for a while trying to figure out what exactly I want to plant. I want to make sure that in my garden I have a lot of good fresh veggies, but one of my goals is to try to put up more dried beans, kind of your starchier things that you would have as a side dish. It's a lot easier to grow lettuce and tomatoes and zucchini and green beans, but it can be hard to grow kind of starchy things like wheat and rice. I'm not probably ever gonna grow wheat or rice on this homestead, but what I can grow that is kind of starchy would be a potato, and I have been able to grow a year's worth of potatoes no problem, and so I want to kind of try to push myself to be able to grow more dried beans, because that's kind of another starchy type side. I've been successful in the past growing black beans. I hopefully am gonna be successful again growing black beans this year, and so I really wanted to try to grow pinto beans and dry them and can them but like I said I couldn't figure out if they were pole beans or bush bean varieties and I don't have any trellises that I had planned to grow pinto beans on a trellis so I actually called the company and I asked them and the lady who I spoke with she said she couldn't tell me with 100% certainty if they were a pole bean or bush bean variety but she thought that they were a bush bean variety so we're going to go ahead and give them a try. Pinto beans, jade green beans, our cannellini beans, and our black beans. Now I'm going to cover them with water, and I'm going to let them soak for a couple hours while I do an inside project. What inspired this huge freezer cooking day is that I found this chicken on clearance and it had to be used or frozen by this day. So I thought instead of just throwing the raw frozen chicken or the raw chicken into the freezer, I might as well turn it into a couple meals so that on nights I just don't want to cook. I don't have the energy to cook. I don't want to make my kitchen dirty. I can just have a ton of meals in the freezer ready to go. This is going to be its own separate video. Alrighty friend, I just got 12 meals made up. These I need to pop in the freezer and then I also was able to get some baked beans in the canner. My canner is done, it's just cooling so when it's cooled I'll be able to take the beans out of the canner. But now I need to get all of these 12 dinners in the freezer except for this. Wait, which one? I wanna do the beef. Yeah, this is the beef. This is gonna be for dinner tonight, so I'm gonna stick this in the fridge. These are all gonna go out into the freezer for dinners this coming spring and summer. We have Mongolian beef. This is Cuban pork tenderloin. 
Caesar chicken, Greek chicken, avocado, cilantro, buttermilk chicken, and what we're having for dinner tonight is honey chipotle chicken, but we're having the beef version. So this is beef, this is chicken, and the rest of these are gonna be for dinner throughout the summer and spring. Now that I got the kitchen work done and it's cooled down a little bit outside, I'm gonna get these in the freezer and then we're gonna go do some planting. And I've been thinking about it as I've been working in the kitchen, but I still don't totally have a plan. So we'll go out there together and kind of work through a few things. I'm gonna grab some gloves and we now get to head outside and start planting some of these beans. Let me show you the difference two and a half hours makes by soaking them in some water. These black beans are almost all the way to the top of this jar. Everything has about doubled in size. So I am going to just strain some of this water out back into that half gallon container of water. I have soaked my beans overnight before, but I think just this couple of hours that we were able to get soaking is gonna be plenty because it is going to be raining for the next four or five days. I did wanna mention friends, before we go out and plant those beans, that Harvest Right freeze dryers are $500 off the entire month of May. They very, very rarely go on sale. And so this is a fantastic time if you've been interested in getting a freeze dryer to get one now before the craziness of harvest. So you can get it, you can learn how to use it. And then once all the goodies from the garden and or purchasing things from local farmers or getting stuff on sale at the grocery store, you will have, you will know how to use your freeze dryer and it won't feel intimidating anymore. I have a medium one. If I was to get another one, I would get a large because they're already a huge investment and the larger ones just have such more capacity and they're not much more compared to just the medium in and of itself. And then I do have the Premier Pump down here, which you do have to change the oil. I was very intimidated about changing the oil, but it is extremely, extremely easy to change the Premier Pump's oil. You literally turn a knob, it drains out, you close the knob and you pour more oil in it. And so it is very, very easy. So don't be intimidated by that. If you are considering upgrading to the oil free pump, you don't really necessarily need to do that. Um, unless you just want to not have an oil pump. But if it's because you're intimidated about changing the oil, don't be intimidated about changing the oil. It is very, very easy to change the oil. The only reason I tell you that is because it is quite a bit more to get the oil-free pump. So if you're gonna spend a little bit more <laughs> instead of maybe getting the oil-free pump, I would get a larger freeze dryer. And then I also wanna show you before we go out and plant beans, how well our zucchini and all of our winter squash are coming up. So many of them have germinated already. We've got Cinderella pumpkins, our muscadine pumpkins. I think over here, yes, these are our cucumbers are coming up. And so it's just really exciting. So probably in the next few days, if I get a spot where it's not raining, I'm gonna get these in the ground right away. It's really encouraging to see those pumpkins and winter squash and summer squash and cucumbers germinate. Oh, also we have melons that are growing there as well because I direct sowed all of those things last year in my garden and I got out of probably 50 seeds I planted, I probably got two that germinated. So that's why I'm planting those inside. Even though I know you can direct sow pumpkins and zucchini, I wanted to keep a much closer eye on them by planting them in here and then I will transplant them out. So it is time. It is time. Let's go get these beans, cilantro planted, and if I have time, I'll come back in here, I'll grab a few more seeds, and we'll get some more things in the ground. It just depends on how much time we have out there because we're gonna be making dinner tonight together, and I need to have time to make dinner. I just dropped a ton of black beans all over, and I don't wanna waste these, so, ah! I 
I still have all these goodies that I need to plant. Some of them, like these, are some herbs that I'm going to wait and plant until I have all my herbs because I'm going to do some herb pots up here. But we've got snapdragons that really need to go on the ground. I've got, we have the eucalyptus that needs to go into the ground. That is looking fantastic. And then we have our cosmos that need to go into the ground. So I'm going to see how many of these I can grab right now without... Oh, wow. Wow. That doesn't seem right. This black bean ooh, already has a root coming out of it, like it's already sprouted. That was fast, if that is from today. I don't remember seeing any that had sprouted. So I'm glad that we soaked them. So along with these black beans, I know I need to get these snap dragons in the ground because they're already starting to put on blooms and they just really want to be in the ground. So we're gonna bring these out. This was one of the other reasons why I was gonna try not to push it and try to do corn today as well, because I knew I had some of these flowers that needed to be put in the ground. This is the bed here that I decided over the weekend that I wanted to get these black beans planted in. You can see that along the back edge of this bed, there are some sugar snap peas. I actually think those are snow peas. Yes, they're Oregon snow peas. And they have just started sprouting, which is really exciting. I still need to build a trellis, but I haven't got to that yet. We've got a little bit. We probably got a couple weeks before I have to have that done. So time will allow, and I will come out and I will do that. But time did allow over this last weekend for me to burn the holes in this landscape fabric. You can see that there are already holes in this landscape fabric. That's because I came out and I had a few minutes, so I thought, oh, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and prep this bed so that when I've got the black beans prepped, I can just come out here and get them planted, which was a great time saver on this day. So what I'm doing is I am just kind of using my finger to make about a one inch depth hole, and then I'm putting one to two seeds per hole, and then I'm gonna cover them up. And I am doing kind of roughly the square foot garden method for planting these black beans. So if you follow the square foot gardening method, you can put nine black bean plants per one square foot, or your black beans can be planted about two in, up, oh, excuse me, about four inches apart. So some of these holes probably are a little bit farther apart than four inches, and some might be a little bit closer because I just kind of came out here and winged it. I didn't use my seeding square. Typically when I do my square foot gardening planting, I've got a really cool seeding square, but I can't really do that with landscape fabric. So it was just kind of an eyeball and I think that it's gonna be close enough. I'm really going back and forth in my brain whether I like this landscape fabric or not because you're gonna see me later on in this video struggle with the blowtorch and Josh ends up teaching me how to use the blowtorch. And so at first I was really not enjoying this landscape fabric, but I was committed to doing it for one year. And most of it boiled down to the fact that I did not like using the blowtorch. But once Josh kind of showed me how to use it, it is a lot easier. And my goal is hopefully to be able to reuse this landscape fabric for years to come because it is a pretty good quality landscape fabric. And as I'm sitting here talking to you, I can see that these rows are not even at all, <laughs> but that's okay. Because once the plants grow, you won't even be able to see the landscape fabric. You won't see the holes and no one will know that these lines are not completely straight. The plants don't care if the rows are straight either. So these black bean seeds are something that I am very proud of. These are seeds that I have saved myself. I grew black beans for the first time in 2020. I saved the seeds and then I planted them out in 2021's garden and I had an abundance harvest. I grew enough black beans in one raised bed, a four by 16 foot raised bed, which is the same size as this raised bed. And I grew enough black beans to save the seed for planting last year and this year. And I grew enough black beans to dry and can for Josh and I's black bean consumption for the last two years. So you can grow a lot of black beans in a small space. 
Last year, I didn't get any harvest because the deer kept eating the plants. So I'm really hoping that this year we get another good black bean harvest. These are a bush bean variety, so they will grow about 10 to 12 inches tall, and I don't need to trellis these black beans at all. I got this entire bed planted with black beans, and I still have quite a few extra. I am a little bit worried that I didn't make the holes quite big enough for the plants to come up. So time will tell. If I notice that they are struggling, I will take this weed fabric up and I just won't use it because I don't think I can burn bigger holes once I plant seed because I don't want to burn the holes. So I still have that many seeds that I'm gonna have to figure out where they're gonna go. And I can still plant something along this edge here. And I can still plant something along this edge here. So I need to run inside and grab something and then we'll be back to figure out what we're gonna put here. I did carry down my zinnias and I still need to get my snapdragons. I have a flat somewhere along that rock wall of nasturtiums and I still have more petunias that I can plant. And I need to grab my blowtorch because I need to burn some more holes in some of the landscape fabric for some of these other things that we have that we get to plant. I am realizing that these are going very far and so I've got to find a lot more space for these three varieties. I still have these plants I need to plant as well. This, these two plants are Rebecca, and these five plants are Echinacea. And we've got our petunias, some pansies, and then our nasturtiums. So these aren't looking super great because they haven't been watered. <laughs> so let's try to find a place for these to go in the garden. I think maybe I'm going to put nasturtiums where I've already, well, now I'm going to put black beans here and then I need to grab the blowtorch. So I'm going to burn a few more holes at the end of this bed. Oh, let me make sure it works. This is a butane torch and the reason why I was not enjoying planting in this landscape fabric at first is because I didn't realize that you could lock the flame on. So there is a safety on it where you have to click a button down and then you push it in and then the flame will light. And I thought you had to do that every time you needed to light it. So basically for every hole I had to relight it. And then Josh just showed me that there's a lock that you can put on it so you can keep the flame on. And once I learned that, I have really been enjoying planting in this landscape fabric and I think it's going to be something that's really going to be beneficial moving forward, but I'm going to give it an entire garden season and then I will let you know if I'm going to do it for years to come. But right now I probably am going to be planting in landscape fabric in the future because I'm so far really enjoying it. I can already tell that it's reducing the amount of weeding that I'm gonna to need to do come really heavy weed season. So I just planted some of the snapdragons here along the edge and I am about to plant some nasturtiums in the corners of this bed so that the nasturtiums can kind of vine out over top of this bed and kind of cascade down into the walkways. And the snapdragons are gonna grow up and the nasturtiums are gonna grow out. So I think that's gonna look really pretty. Coming from this bed we just planted, we're gonna just skip right on over to here. This is our tomato bed. These are all Roma tomatoes, determinate varieties that I'm going to put tomato cages around. And then these plants right in front are celery. I think I'm gonna put green beans all around this bed. I'm thinking the green beans on the outside here and then along the inside there. And I did that last year where I planted green beans on the outside around the tomato plants and that worked really well, Roma tomatoes in particular. So I'm gonna do that again. So we're gonna get some holes in the ground and get these green beans planted. I do end up making the holes for these green beans probably about twice the size as I did for the black beans. I had mentioned earlier that I, as I was planting the black beans, I was thinking, oh goodness, I don't know if I made these holes big enough. 
and I'm wondering if the beans are going to have a hard time sprouting and making sure that the leaves are going to have space to sprout with the size hole that I made. And all the black beans, as I'm talking to you right now, have sprouted and the size of the hole was probably perfect. So they were a little bit more tedious to plant in versus these ones are probably about the twice as big. So it made planting easier, but because they are a little bit bigger, it is going to leave room for more potential weeds. So if I was to do this again, and I was going to be planting black beans or green beans, I would go with the smaller hole, because even though it was a little bit more tedious to plant in, they were all able to sprout no problem, and it is going to reduce the amount of potential weeding. So I was not really planning on putting what I initially mentioned to you, green beans kind of in the inside between the tomato plants. I was just gonna do it along the outside edge, but then I thought, you know what? I think there's space here. I'm gonna go ahead and add a few more plants. So because I plant in raised beds, this soil is a lot more nutrient dense and I can control the nutrients in this a lot easier than if it was an in-ground garden. And so I do tend to plant things pretty close together and pretty intensely because I the plants aren't going to be competing for nutrients as much as they would be if I was planting in an in-ground garden bed. So a lot of the planting guides will say a little bit farther apart. And typically those are kind of keeping in mind that you might be planting in ground where there might not be quite as nutrient dense soil. So I am going to fertilize these plants once they do sprout. I have already amended the soil. When I put the soil in these raised beds, I sent off the soil to a soil test and I got back the results and I amended the soil based on what the recommendations were. And then throughout the growing season, I will also fertilize these plants if I notice that they need to be fertilized. So you can see here how quick and easy burning these holes in this landscape fabric is now. That's because I figured out how to use this butane torch and I can just move from a hole to hole to hole and burn the holes and I don't need to relight the flame every time I am moving from hole to hole. So you can see I just put holes and I plant beans wherever there was space for it. And in here, I'm putting about one to two seeds per hole, just depending on kind of what ends up falling out of my hand into the hole. And I'm planting these green bean seeds one inch depth as well. So here we go. We have one entire bed planted out 100%. I don't think I can cram anything else in here. Maybe in the corner I could put a nasturtium, but I think well, yeah, maybe there and in that corner, what do you think? <laughs> but we've got green beans all throughout these tomato plants, along with the celery, an entire bed of black beans. I am thinking these holes might be a little too small, but time will tell on that. I can just pull it off if I need to. I want to get to the cilantro, and then I've been thinking about what to do with these beans because I have a lot and I don't think I want to dedicate an entire bed to more beans. So hang on, cause we're gonna come back to them. But I think I want to get to the cilantro next. So let's take care of the cilantro. What I'm thinking for the cilantro is this bed here. This is cabbages. Some of them I started myself, some cauliflower. I think this whole bed, I actually started everything in this bed from seed myself. I was having a little bit of a nutrient deficiency so I did fertilize and what's the new growth after fertilizing is nice and green, but the leaves that were telling me there was a nutrient deficiency, um, I can just pick those off and I can just stick those under here and let them compost in place. But everything is looking a lot better since I fertilized, but I think we're gonna put the cilantro along this edge right here. I'm doing something a little bit different here with the landscape fabric than what I have done with the last few things we've planted today. Because I'm gonna be planting this cilantro so closely together, I don't really wanna burn holes in the landscape fabric for these 
plants. So I am pulling up the landscape fabric. So I'm taking out all the staples. I'm then folding the landscape fabric up underneath itself so that I can really densely plant this cilantro. I thought that if I was to burn holes in the landscape fabric, it would just be too close together and I just didn't want to do that because I, I am wanting to try to use this landscape fabric again next year if I do end up falling in love with this gardening method and moving forward with it. I would like to get more than one year out of it. So I thought that if I burned, I was thinking I could burn a bunch of little holes or I don't know. I just felt like if I was to then burn one long strip that doing that would kind of box me in a little bit more than if I just folded it up underneath. So that's what I did. So now I am taking my hand and I'm just making a trench along this whole side of this raised bed. And I am going to open these cilantro packets and I'm going to sprinkle them and bury them about maybe a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch deep. Cilantro is one of my absolute favorite herbs. I spilled a seed packet here and I was pretty disappointed about that, but I was able to save most of the seed. I was kind of able to dig it around from that cauliflower plant. But cilantro is one of my favorite herbs. I absolutely love it, but it is kind of a difficult herb to grow. It's not difficult to get it to germinate, but what can happen is that in the heat of the summer, the cilantro likes to bolt, which means go to flower. And when that happens, it gets bitter. So the growing window is pretty short in the springtime because it, once it gets hot, it bolts. So my goal with my cilantro this year is to plant a ton of it have it all get ready at the same time. I'll eat fresh what I can, but I do plan to freeze dry a bunch of it. I have tried dehydrating cilantro. It turns brown. It doesn't hold the flavor, but freeze dried cilantro is incredible. It holds the flavor. It holds the color. It reconstitutes in your salsas and things beautifully. So I'm planting a ton of it. I would not be able to eat this much cilantro fresh before it gets bitter in the summer but I do have means of preserving it so that we can enjoy it for a longer period of time. This is only one of the plantings I plan to do of cilantro. I wanna to try to get one more summer planting of cilantro and then I will grow cilantro in the fall. So I'll probably end up planting cilantro in July or August and that way it can grow into the fall and that's another good time to grow cilantro. At both ends of the cilantro, I am putting a nasturtium so we can have even more flowers in this bed. We did it. We have three beds officially planted. Now I'm going to go start dinner and I'm gonna share with you and we're going to plant these pinto beans, cannellini beans, the rest of the black beans, and the rest of the jade beans but I need to get the grill going so we can get dinner going because it's getting to be dinner time and we're gonna wanna eat. So I was gonna look at the weather because I know it's supposed to start raining here very, very shortly. So I was trying to think if I should water these in. Oh, okay, so now it's not supposed to rain till tomorrow. So I will water these in, but I wanna get dinner going first. All right, I'm gonna get the grill going. I grilled yesterday, so I need to get it going and cleaned. Okay, it's on. And what we're gonna do with the rest of those beans is we are going to plant one of them out in the green stock. So these are the originals. I have my leaves that are already planted out and they're growing phenomenally. Let me show you. The nasturtium one is filling out really, really nicely. When we planted these ones, there was only two leaves on them and now they are definitely starting to fill out and I'm really excited about that. These little planters are looking really good. And then this one is starting to fill out as well. I have been going through and deadheading any of the petunias that need deadheading, and it is causing them to explode with blooms. So there's tons of blooms that are coming on here, and this is hopefully just gonna fill out so you can't even see the planter at all.
So I, I don't want to forget where I started, so I'm going to put one seed just on the top. I'm not going to plant it in just so I know that that's where I started. I've never grown green beans in, one, in this before, so this is an experiment for me. And I'm going to start with the green beans on the top, and then we'll put the dried beans farther down because these will be easier to harvest. And I'm actually going to have to harvest the green beans on a regular basis versus the dry beans. I plant them once, and I let them just hang out all summer long until we harvest them at the end. But green beans, the more you pick them, typically the more they will grow. So I'm putting about four bean seeds in each one of the planters. And we made it all the way around. I still have some extra that I need to go find places for. So the next thing I'm going to plant are these cannellini beans because I haven't planted any of these yet. Over the weekend, I had some people come over for a dinner party and two of my guests asked me if I had planted wave petunias in my green stock and I had no idea what they were talking about. So over the weekend, I went down a rabbit trail learning about petunias. I assumed after hearing the word wave petunias that wave petunias are ones that bush out and that's what I wanted. I've mentioned before that I want those petunias to completely cover the green stalk so you can't see the green stalk anymore. And so I thought, oh no, I probably planted the wrong ones. I just bought whatever they had at the store and I planted them. The good news is both uh, the two main varieties of petunias are wave petunias and super petunias, and they both bush out and get really big. Wave petunias tend to bush out and they do better though in a landscaping like in ground gardening because the root system tends to create a big mass of root ball and so those petunias varieties tend not to do as well in containers typically the type of petunias that you're going to find in a container a hanging basket or things like that are going to be what are it a super petunia and they get big and bushy but they tend not to create as big of a root ball and so Regardless of what I planted, because I still don't know, I don't have any of the tags anymore. I just purchased these. They were on sale at my local big box store. <laughs> and so regardless, I should have a nice big covered green stock in petunias, but I, I don't really know if they are super petunias or wave petunias. Both of them do bush out, but one does better in a container and one does better in ground in a landscape. So this is my second green stalk. I decided to plant my pinto beans in this green stalk. So I'm gonna get both of these planted up with beans. And then I also do need to mention that petunias like to be fed. So I will feed my petunias about every two weeks with a liquid fertilizer. I can smell the grill and it's starting to smell good. Well what I did was one, well the top on both of these are the green beans and then the bottom four tiers are, one of them is the cannellini beans, one of them is the pinto beans. I watered these in extremely well and I'm hoping, well I'm not hoping, I will come out here and I will water them again tomorrow. Even if it doesn't rain, I still need to go out there and water and I still have some bean seeds. I definitely hydrated a few more than I probably needed to. I just didn't know how many. And so what I might do after dinner is go out and find somewhere to plant these because since I hydrated them, they have to be planted tonight. Because if they sprout after being hydrated and then they dry out and they don't grow, then the plant will die, obviously. So I'm going to let this sit here. I'm going to go inside and get some the rest of the dinner going. Dinner should be really easy to throw together because I already have the tortillas made. 
On a day like this, after working all day, I would not go through the effort of making homemade tortillas. But since I had already made them and they were in the freezer, they are going to be delicious. They're thawed out really nicely. I will warm them up before we eat dinner. Can we get those out though? Got our homemade sour cream, and that was easier than anything. Let's see. We also have some home quick pickled onions. So good. That's going to be good on the tacos. I think I'm going to cut up a little bit of lettuce to go on the tacos. Or I do have some spring mix here. Maybe we could put the spring mix on. Yeah, that looks really good. Don't even have to cut up lettuce. And we'll use that because that needs to be used up first. And then I know that there's the main, oh, cheese. Definitely have to have cheese with tacos. I have two things of shredded cheese. I shredded a bunch of cheese. I'm gonna show this. And I didn't mark which ones were which when I put them in the freezer. And I think what I'm gonna do next time is I'll always have a color indicate what kind of cheese is what. So this is some cheddar cheese, so this is gonna be perfect. So I'll put this one back. So I don't even have to shred cheese tonight, which is a win. Let's see, I've got the main dish somewhere. and I thought it was in here, but maybe it's in the outside fridge. Oh, here, also. Some homemade sriracha sauce. I've been loving this recently. When I first made it, I didn't eat it very much. I don't know why. Then I opened this for a recipe the other day and I can't get enough of it. It's so good. I do have a recipe for this on the blog. So let me get the main dish. But first, I need a drink of kombucha. <laughs> this is the strawberry mango kombucha and it is phenomenal. So good. That's a winner combination for sure. So let's get the main dish out so we can get it on the grill. It must be out here. This is honey chipotle marinade. It's beef and it is, I've never seen beef like this before. I got it at Costco. I buy beef from a local rancher and I rarely ever have to buy beef at the grocery store, but I saw this cut and I really wanted to try it. And if I like it, next time I order a half a side of beef, I'm gonna ask the butcher to cut it like this because it's super, super thin. And I'm excited to give this a try. I think the grill should be ready at this point. This beef should cook in a matter of literal just minutes because it is so thinly cut. It's probably cut about an eighth of an inch thick. And I do need to get this grill cleaned because I used it yesterday. So usually when I'm done with the grill, I just turn it off because my I would forget if I was to leave it on to clean it while we were eating, I would forget to turn the propane off. So as soon as I take my meat off the grill, I turn my grill off and then I know that I need to clean it before I use it every time. So I just use this wooden scraper as opposed to the metal ones. I got it because it said on the little package that it was supposed to be better for you than using the metal one. So I don't know if that's true or not, but I like it and I'm going to get this really clean. You know what? I should have turned both sides of the grill on. I rarely use this side, but I'm going to need it today. So I'm going to get that on. I let this side of the grill heat up because I had turned that this side on a little bit later. So now this is all really, really hot. So we are going to get this steak on the grill. You can see how thin it is. This might be hard to grill. for a minute but I think it's time to flip it because I don't want it to get overcooked. My tongs are in the dishwasher so I'm just using a fork to do this. Oh my goodness, if you could 
only smell this. Mmm, <sighs> let me show it to you. So I have not tasted this yet because I wanted to taste it with you, but I want to go run a knife through it and I want to cut it really small. And I want to try to get a good amount of char on it. And I think I achieved that. And Josh came in here and he said he's really hungry, so I'm really excited for dinner tonight. And then I remembered I have some avocado too that I could cut up and we could just have some sliced avocado. Yum! Okay, so let me take a bite. That is not too spicy. Warm, sweet, fresh, with some kombucha. And it's Taco Tuesday. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> it's Taco Tuesday. Happy Taco Tuesday. Tacos are probably one of our favorite. Anything Mexican is probably one of our favorites. We we do enjoy it and we eat it a lot. So that is dinner. I can link the recipe down below. I can actually link the tortilla recipe, the sour cream video, the pickled onion recipe, this recipe, if you want to make this yourself. It's so, it's gonna be so good. I'm gonna be just as good with some good store-bought tortillas as well and store-bought sour cream. So let me call Josh in for dinner. We're going to enjoy this and sit down and relax it's been a busy busy day i've been non-stop all day and nothing sounds more like a wonderful way to end the evening than some tacos some really good mango strawberry kombucha and spending time with my family so thank you for being here thank you for being here as we made some fun food and we got some serious progress done out in the garden that's really encouraging we got the two green stalks planted we got two beds, three beds completely planted, which is huge. We have 20 beds total. And then I think five of them are basically done because they are the pepper and tomato beds. But I might be able to stick some more things here and there. I, because I figured out how to use my torch to put holes in the landscape fabric, I definitely am feeling a little bit more free out in the garden. At first, the landscape fabric felt very constricting to me because I didn't know how to use the blowtorch to put holes in it, and it was very tedious to put holes in it, but now I've kind of got that under control. So, so far, the landscape fabric is working really well for me. I am noticing that there are weeds that are starting to pop up. When I burn the holes, I can see little seedlings that things I didn't plant are starting to come up, which means that the landscape fabric is going to be doing its job here. Um, it, to me, it doesn't look as beautiful, but I think once things start growing and thriving and everything, it's going to look really, really nice. So I'm going to call Josh in here so we can eat before our dinner gets cold because I'm just kind of rambling now. But I just wanted to say how much I appreciate you for being here. I just really, I really do not take it for granted that you take time out of your day to spend time with me. Time is the most precious thing we have. And I am glad you enjoy spending it with me because I certainly enjoy spending it with you. So if you enjoyed this, I can pop a couple of my other videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. If you are new around here, I would greatly con um, appreciate if you would consider subscribing so you don't miss anything. The garden is hopefully only going to be becoming more and more green and lush as this summer progresses. So I wouldn't want you to miss out on anything. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.